Trevor Breck has composed the score for the new half-hour drama series, Servant, on Apple TV+. I'm Riley Chow, contributing editor at Gold Derby. Now, I understand that the big note that you got from M. Night Shyamalan was to make it weirder. So what was the weirdest thing that you did? Um, well, you know, the idea of making it weirder was sort of like a, um, a pursuit of making sure nothing sounded uh, like anything uh, else. So he wanted the score to be different at all times and unique and, uh, and he reacted ag against things that sounded normal. I guess that would be the way towards making it weirder. Um, and so I kind of learned violin, um, you know, in a very modern, you know, you can do a, some modern techniques on the violin and not be like a real violinist. I took a couple lessons to make sure I was holding it right and like the bow, um, but like I can't play like a real melody on it because <laughs> that's like real technique. But I can do like effects and like, I was using like pencil and like a toothbrush, which has like, you know, like a rubber toothbrush at the handle. It has like a little bounciness to it. So it's a little bit safer to bounce that on your violin. So I would do that on the strings. Um, so a lot of that kind of stuff was interesting. And then I have an upright piano in my studio that I would do the same thing with just found objects that I would have around and, uh, you know, anything that just sounded uh, like kind of, you know, there's no sample of, you know, because <laughs> that's like so much of composer life is like, oh, what sample can I have or, you know, that you can kind of pull from. But I definitely wanted to just, you know, create new and interesting sounds and things that um, really spoke to the uniqueness of the storyline and the characters who, uh, we're dealing with this like uh, quite extraordinary experience. I love how you say that you learned violin. Like, I don't even know where to go with that, but uh, like what kind of instruments do you play? I play piano, that's my main instrument. I, st I studied that in college. Um, and then clarinet, I learned like in middle school, but I still learn it. I can still play it and I play it on all my scores. Um, and I do like multiphonics and things. Um, of course, I like look up charts online. I'm like, okay, hold this. <laughs> and then, uh, um, uh, and now I do a lot of violin stuff, just sort of like arpeggios and just kind of, again, holding a position and I'm getting a little better about moving around, but, uh, um, and experimenting, but, you know, you just, pick up something, see what you can do. And as a composer, I would say like a, when I say learn, I would be like a learn composer violin. So I would be like, it's a different thing. Like I'll just play in different parts of it or, you know, uh, a real violinist would be kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, I can at least like, you know, there are sections of the score that are, me playing like arpeggios that are you know it took me a while to like really put them down because i really wanted them to be right like actual arpeggios played properly and i didn't have time to get like a player in so um i was just like i'll just do this i gotta learn it so uh, i'm gonna figure this out so um yeah those are my main instruments and uh I really love synths, so I have a you know a few synthesizers that I keep up with and um, that kind of thing. Now speaking about horror specifically, uh, how much are you of the mind that the genre gets away with too much experimentation uh, without cohesion, or do you feel like that's an advantage to the genre where you do have the liberty to really try new things? Yeah, I mean it's interesting that you say it gets away with too much. <laughs> like, I had heard that from another composer that I interviewed. Yeah, I mean, it's like, um, you can definitely, I could definitely see how you can just like do weird shit, make it scary, and then just call it a cue and send it. Um, and you could get, get by with that for sure. I mean, I definitely love melody and things. The, the thing I worked on before uh, 
uh, servant was the goldfinch, which is like this kind of, you know, the score is designed to be a Hollywood, beautiful, you know, melodies and everything. So, and the and servant has those moments where it's piano, like direct piano playing a, a theme. Um, I'm playing on a, a glockenspiel. I'm playing like the theme for the baby or, you know, so having like a melody or hum harmony and having that be a major part is, I think is important. Uh, and then surrounding that with the t interesting textures that horror film scoring has sort of, um, uh, you know, has, has, has brought out like a new um, universe, I think. Um, balancing those has been really interesting to see um, how composers are, are kind of figuring out. Um, and I think the most successful kind of scores, um, you know, like uh, are really great at that, like uh, score to Hereditary, which I thought was, you know, brilliant. Um, uh, uh, is good at that too. You just remember all sorts of elements throughout the, f the film because it's, uh, because it has uh, more than just a bunch of sounds, um, elements that return. And how did uh, M. Night Shyamalan find you for this project? Uh, how did you come on board? Um, so this, the music supervisor for The Goldfinch was also the music supervisor for uh, M. Night Shyamalan's servant. And she worked, her name is Sue Jacobs. And she worked with him, she's worked with him for like 20 years. Um, so she recommended me. Um, it was just one of, you know, many or a few different composers. Um, and we had never, I'd never met him or we didn't know. Uh, so it was sort of definitely a gamble for him to consider, you know, me who just had a one movie before, but like, um, and it was a totally different movie than what he was, was planning on doing. Um, but we, uh, you know, I tried some music, I sent him some ideas and, you know, it was like, oh, this sounds too, this is interesting, but it's not really the music for this show. And, and we kind of figured out that it needed to be more transparent and, um, uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So we, you know, and then it, and then it just sort of worked out that, uh, that we were kind of uh, working well together. So. so we're coming up on the Emmys and do you know which of your 10 episodes from the first season you've submitted for consideration? I believe I submitted the, um, the eighth episode. Um, I think so. Uh, Apple worked that out, but uh, at least that's what I requested. And that has like the most um, intense, crazy violin music, actually. <laughs> most intense violin playing as well. But uh, it's an episode where the char uh, uh, Julian character is, um, is really kind of losing his shit. And, um, uh, you know, the music really takes another, takes a step up before, we, you know, we go to Knight's episode, which he, he directed the following episode, which is episode nine, and then episode 10, the, the uh, finale episode of the season, um, takes it up to next, the next step. But episode eight, I felt like musically was a really interesting one. And uh, Apple, they put out the 45 tracks uh, that you have in the show. Um, is there a particular track that you would recommend as kind of your, your best work, one that you're most proud of? Um, you know, there's a, one of the tracks that we sent out when we were promoting the score was um, from episode eight. It's called Gone. And that was, um, uh, when the baby disappears and uh, it's uh, it's a really crazy piece that has some of the themes that come out 
throughout the score, um, kind of like all mashed together. And I, th I think it's like three, four minutes long. So it's maybe even longer. So it's kind of like a bigger piece. Um, and the last one is uh, pretty substantial as well. Um, and that one's called The Servant, it's sort of like the finale. Um, uh, those are like the big kind of huge loud cues. Um, but there are other other ones that are, you know, in the more, as I said, like melodic and beautiful sounding things like mother and child. And there's another one, father and child, where it's just piano music with like um, different sound. And it still has that kind of horror quality. There's always that supernatural world going on. Um, but there's still this emotional landscape that uh, that Knight wanted to make sure was present in these particular scenes. In the scripts for, uh, for Servant, are you getting a lot of notes about like where they want to have score? Uh, we would do spotting sessions um, after they you know shot it and edited because uh, Knight would get a, a direct, so he didn't direct all of the episodes. So there'd be, he directed the first and the ninth but there'd be other directors and be like a director's cut and then producer's cut and he's the producer or the executive producer uh, and then he'd go through and make you know a certain number of producer cuts and then we would sit down and turn off any of the temp score that they had and then just go through the the episode and watch it um, and then we would uh, you know kind of feel out where the music is. He'd have his ideas. He would write down notes to himself about, about where he thought music would be appropriate. Um, and we would kind of, you know, talk it through, sort of like, you know, inch our way through the episode. Um, and then, you know, after scoring the whole episode, we would say, oh, this is maybe too much, take, an ep take a cue out or there's not enough when you add something or extend this cue or, you know, that's sort of like kind of figured out as we do like a run through and see how it feels. Um, and then just kind of respond after that. But it would, it would always be sort of like by the time it, it hit uh, nights, kind of like near final cut. Um, that's when we would, that's when I would come in and start scoring. What can you tease about season two? How is the music going to differ? So, I mean, we started season, this season and I, you know, did the whole episode and then we hit the brakes. Like, it was like, uh, actually, Sue, the music edit, uh, supervisor, she was kind of like, why don't you stop for a second? I think Knight's going to want like a whole new thing. He's not going to want like the same future like because some some shows kind of have like this you know they might have new cues and new iterations but like he wanted like a new uh a new sound or a, an evolved sound let's call it that so and it's not like i didn't use some of the same instruments i'm playing violin and piano and i'm bowing instruments and stuff but there's a whole new level of like uh intensity and electronics are a whole new place um, and that's because I think he wanted there to be um, something uh, a, a lot more uh, emotionally visceral and, um, uh, you know, uh, threatening at times. So, um, musically. So, I, I, we were, in, we went back kind of in the way that we started even working on the job where we, I would do just sort of like ideas, blank ideas or like, oh, maybe this is something, put it anywhere. I don't know. Here's another idea. You could, this could be something for Leanne. I don't know. Yeah, you know, here's some stuff with voice. We never used voice ever in uh, season one. So maybe we could try it here. And so that's something that kind of evolved into like attaching it to her. And I'm using like, vocal samplers, samplers and stuff. And that was never something I would have imagined being in season one, but it's like evolved as being a natural current in season two now. Um, so 
as a as a director and a showrunner, I think he really wanted to not just like recycle and recycle season one, uh, the affect of season one. He really wanted to evolve into something brand new. So that means season three, I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to go through the whole thing and be like, oh God, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> Okay, uh, well, Trevor, we look forward to seeing it. Uh, the show is a lot of fun to watch. And uh, to our viewers, you can check out other interviews with Emmy contenders on our YouTube channel and go to goldderby.com to make your own Emmy predictions. All right. Thank you, Riley.